My name is Ami Bhatt. I'm an affiliate here at The Broad. I'm a Dana-Farber Fellow in Medical Oncology and Hematology, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow in Matthew Meyerson's lab. My greatest inspiration in doing the type of research I do came from being a physician on the wards. I was exposed to a lot of interesting clinical situations, and I think in medical school you think that you're going to be able to identify the cause of every disease that you see in a patient. The reality was there were lots of unsolved mysteries on the wards, and I think that's what really inspired me. I realized that when I started my postdoctoral fellowship, I had the opportunity to apply a new and exciting tool, that of genomics, to try to solve some of these you know, so-called unsolved mysteries. When you're faced as a physician with an unsolvable mystery, it is incredibly paralyzing. Um, it can be very dejecting for you as a provider, but it really takes away hope from patients as well. Um, I think we come to that edge of you know, what clinical medicine can answer and what it can provide more often than I think would have ever been possible. And so there is a distinct need for research to kind of investigate at that border of medicine. One of the things that we're doing to try to overcome these challenges in unsolved mysteries in medicine is to apply the best and kind of most modern biological techniques to try to gain a handle on what might be causing these diseases and how we might treat them. Part of my efforts in trying to identify infections in immunocompromised individuals has really required me to adapt new tools. And one of the challenges has been in clinical medicine, when we suspect an infection, we typically take a body fluid specimen and we send it to the clinical micro lab. And at the micro lab, they kind of have a set of usual suspects. You know, the usual suspects is, you know, people who are bacteria that have perpetrated crimes before in humans. And so they kind of have this like mugshot book where they have pictures of every single bacteria or characteristics of every single bacterium and virus that has infected a human before. When they get a body fluid specimen and they try to figure out what infection is at play, they're really trying to match the picture of the organism or molecular characteristics of the organism with the mug shots in the mug shot book. Um, you can imagine that this is incredibly powerful, um, but what if you have a new criminal? Um, you're not gonna find that new criminal in the mug shot book. And so a lot of my efforts have been focused on how do you identify new criminals? And how do you add information to that mugshot book? So for me, projects always start with an interesting clinical situation or a disease that is vexing because we can't figure out what causes it. With that in mind, I really try to bring molecular biology techniques, microbiology techniques, and computer science to bear so that we can solve these epic mysteries. Um, there are tons of personalities involved, tons of contributors, and going down a very twisty and curvy road, sometimes running into dead ends and finding ways over walls, um, we really like to bring every single story to an epic conclusion. So I think one of the most special aspects of the Broad is that there is a culture of sharing and that there is a culture of responsibility in science. I think we all feel obligated um, in a really good way to participate in each other's science. I think that's demonstrated by the fact that almost all of the area hospitals and academic institutions collaborate with the Broad. And instead of being afraid to share data with one another, they're encouraged to do so. And I think that's something that is special about the Broad. It's encouraged at the Broad, and it's rewarded at the Broad. Um, so that is, I think, what accelerates the pace of medicine and science. And I think at the end of the day, it's what we are responsible for doing for our patients.